noticed in your recent article in the Washington Post uh, that you had said that the right needs to get centered. Um, I'm wondering if you can kind of give me a sense of where you feel that the Republicans are perhaps in a rebuilding phase and, and where you think they need to be. Yeah, well, if you look at the exit polls of the 2008 election, one interesting thing is that people self-identified ideologically the same way they did in 2004. About 34 percent conservatives, roughly 44 percent moderates, 22 percent liberals. So the conservatives the Republicans have, that gets you about 34 okay. percent. You need to get more of those uh, moderate centrist voters. And I think the key thing is, uh, one, they, they need to do better. They just can't lose the debate over the economy. Uh, you know, McCain lost it by nine or ten points, something he didn't seem to be apparently very interested in, which is kind of a problem uh, in this election season. Mm -hmm. And they need to um, be more fluid and persuasive on talking about pocketbook concerns that they haven't traditionally been so interested in, whether it's health care, whether it's transportation, or whether it's the cost of tuition. You know, Republicans didn't have one answer on the economy, which is cut taxes. Mm -hmm. And you don't have as many people paying income taxes as you used to. A huge amount of people, because of what both Clinton and Bush did, are off the income tax rolls. Plus, the income tax rates just aren't as high as they were when Ronald Reagan came into office and income taxes and bracket creep uh, were some of the most important issues in our politics. Is it a tough time for the Republicans, let's say for the ones that do want to go to the center, uh, if you look at a lot of Obama's cabinet picks, he seems to at least be trying to stake out some centrist position. Um, is it tough to make the argument to Republicans in terms of let's go to the center rather than go to the right or even further right? Well, there are a couple things. One, my definition of going to the center is probably different than what most people think going to the center is. I think the social issues are a benefit. The social, social and cultural issues are a benefit to Republicans, and it would be a mistake to jettison them, because a lot of working class voters, that's why they vote for Republicans. They're not necessarily that attracted to Republican economic policy. Now, you have to present it in a way that's not crude and ham-handed. You can't go around to parts of America saying, OK, you're the real America. Everyone else, not so much. Right. You know, That's just not going to sell. And also, at times during the campaign, I mean, McCain didn't talk about the social and cultural issues much, but there were some proxy cultural issues like Bill Ayers and um, Barack Obama's associations, which I thought were legitimate issues, but people can't think you're bringing them up to distract them from the things they really care about, which was the, main thing. the economy, right. Okay. Um, but on your question on Obama, this is the opportunity the Democrats have, is um, is occupying the center. And the way you do it is through moderate, effective, and competent governance. Mm -hmm. So if Barack Obama can deliver that, that's going to be a huge deal. And it's going to make it very difficult for Republicans. Now, what we know from his choices so far is that he seems to have the intention to try to deliver on that. Whether he can, you know, once you're in, in government, you have to make very difficult decisions. Life gets more complicated. But his choices in the tradition transition suggest that that's the way he's headed. And where, um, in terms of uh, the National Review, where do you think the National Review is in terms of the national conversation? Um, if William F. Buckley were alive right now, what do you think he would have said about this, this very historical election? You know, I think a lot about, obviously, what, what Bill would uh, think. And he, um, before he passed away earlier this year, he was very concerned about what he called a kind of intellectual sloth on the right. And he was a little vague about exactly what he meant by that. But uh, you could get a sense of what he meant. And, and the, the way I interpret that is there's really, um, in the 80s and even into the 90s, there's a clear sense the Republican Party was the party of ideas, that they had the innovative and fresh policy. They had a bunch of uh, reformist governors you know, in the 80s who really were the um, harbingers of what would be um, uh, important policy changes at the federal level, welfare reform and things like that were cooked up in the states first. There hasn't been that sort of ferment. And there's been a sense that Republicans have been um, existing on intellectual fumes for a while now, because the top three or four issues that they existed on for 30 years are not as important. Taxes, we've talked about. Crime, another one. Welfare reform, another one. And the Cold War, obviously, you know, which was won more than a decade ago. And is it tough? I mean, the Republican Party is a big tent, like the Democratic Party is. Um, people are talking about, like I say, people moving towards the center. A lot of the conservative intellectuals, George Will, Kathleen Parker, Peggy Noonan, so many yourself, have called for perhaps a move to the center, have perhaps even, you know, at times sort of a, you know, maybe a grudging respect for the potential of a Barack Obama. Um, what do you say to the people like a Sean Hannity, like a Rush Limbaugh, that are very 
uh, populist in terms of the center of the country, but do want to take the Republican Party in a different direction. Yeah. How do you kind of manage those different expectations? Well, I'm friends with both Sean and Rush, and I respect what they do a lot. They're extremely talented guys. And I think this is a little bit of a, a false choice that's been cooked up in the op-ed pages, particularly by my friend David Brooks in the New York Times, who okay. posited in, in a very uh, influential a column that there's going to be this huge fight between the reformist conservatives who talk a little bit more about uh, developing some new policy to appeal to people in a different way and these traditional conservatives would be Rush at all. Rush would be the leader of them. I think it's a false choice because if you look, look at the McCain campaign, the single most innovative policy that reform-oriented conservatives welcomed most was his ideas on health care reform. You didn't see Rush or Sean or anyone else beating up on those ideas because what McCain did, he took conservative principles, which involved choice and the free market, and applied them to a policy area where conservatives traditionally hadn't had much to say, health care. So that's my model of what the Republican Party needs to be trying to do. And I think once you get down to specifics rather than abstractions and labels, a lot of this um, inner and eastern warfare goes away. Do you think? I hope. Yeah. And do you, what sort of era do you think that we're, we're entering, um, like I say, both on the left and the right? Some people have said that maybe we're entering a new progressive era, but that's certainly to be debated. But where do you think the Republican Party is going as a party? Is it, is it fair to say that it's in a rebuilding phase or maybe, as you're saying, that it's trying to kind of uh, do some inner questioning and maybe try to come out re-energized like it might have done in the 1960s? Yeah, well, I hope it's, it's the, the latter. And the scary thing is if you look at big sea changes in American politics, usually they, uh, they kind of happen before the president who embodies them gets into office. You look at the New Deal, Hoover was quite activist on the, the Depression prior to FDR. There's some continuity in the policy there. But the sea change was really between Coolidge and Hoover. You look at uh, Reagan. Carter did a lot of deregulation that people forget about in the late 70s. Congress cut taxes in the late 70s so you could feel the shift coming even before Reagan was elected. And what scares me now as a conservative, you have a conservative Republican administration who, is, who has implemented a huge $700 billion bailout for the financial sector, which could represent a shift in our, our um, political economic thinking that will be represented by Barack Obama. I hope it's not a permanent one. I hope it's temporary. I supported the bailout because I, I just think uh, the financial system is uniquely fragile and you need to backstop it when it's in danger of totally melting down. But the problem is now everyone's showing up in Washington wanting a bailout.